I'm, I'm addressing the problems of the Schofield Bible. Schofield Bible, the Schofield Reference Bible, the Old Schofield, the New Schofield Reference Bible, the Old Schofield Study Bible. These are all terms referring to a study Bible put together by Dr. C.I. Schofield with the first edition in 1909. When I first uh, was choosing a topic uh, in correspondence with Pastor Waite, I had mentioned this, and I was aiming at just the New Schofield because I figured that was enough to uh, address. Well, in the correspondence, he always came back in parentheses, old slash new, so... Maybe he was telling me something, I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to try to address both, and I hope you understand it's the tip of the iceberg. It's getting into this, found out there's more and more. Thing. And you've heard a lot today, I mean, well, yesterday and today already, about some of the problems with Bibles. And these problems exist with the old Schofield as well as the new. Even though the old Schofield is King James. The new Schofield is definitely not King James. Uh, this first chart... Uh, Give you an idea of what uh, we're up against, or I was up against when looking at this. Um, very quickly, the Dr. Schofield put out a, a, a reference Bible in, in 1909. That was King James text. He revised it in 1917. Again, text is still King James, but he revised the, the footnotes and the margins. And that's referred to for many years as the old Schofield. Probably some of you have one. I do. Uh, and then, in, and look at this, 50 years later, the new Schofield Reference Bible. Now, here's where words were changed, and the King James Bible text was in the margin of most, but not all. If you notice, uh, in, the chart, in, in the chart up here, I have Bible slash edition. What that means is that on the title page, it was called the Schofield Reference Bible, or New Schofield Reference Bible. On the, on the spine, it was called New Schofield Reference uh, Edition, which is kind of interesting. And you'll see more of this cha changing in titles as we, as we go down the page here. And in 1996, um, again, what is that, uh, 31 years later, uh, Oxford uh, University Press produced the Schofield Study Bible. And a lot of this was put together in just the last week. This one, I got the information from a friend of mine uh, over the phone, and he read me this information. Again, very interesting of the, of the titles used. Title page, Schofield Study Bible, The Spine, Old Schofield Study System, the copyright page, the Schofield Reference Bible. And this was, he had the 13th printing, and it essentially, like, come on, am I still okay? I'm still up here, okay. Uh, it, it appears to be the old Schofield repackaged. From reading uh, uh, various references, I found out that there is a, hopefully I'll go away. I found out there is another edition of uh, copyright in 1996 called the Old Schofield Study Bible Standard Edition. 1917 notes, and this was a 17th printing. Again, it, it appears to be the old Schofield repackaged because it says right in the definition that it was reset, retitled, 1917 text page for page. I'll, I'll keep going through this and, uh, to get through the. Is there, okay, great. Uh, a few days ago, my wife and I went to uh, Lifeway uh, Christian Bookstore to look at the, look at what we could get there. And by the way. It's very difficult now to get a old Schofield. Very difficult. It's also very difficult to get a new Schofield. Because I, I was trying, for this comparison, I was trying to get. We found one at a used Christian bookstore. But anyway, at, at uh, Lifeway, <laughs> they had this again, 1996. On the title page, it was Schofield Study Bible, the spine was Schofield Study System. Excuse me, I'm getting, no, that's right. And then, the, and then the box said Old Schofield Study Bible Classic Edition. Again, it appears to be an Old Schofield repackaged. Let me skip that next one and go down to 2003. That was another one we found. Title page, the Schofield Study Bible, the spine, Schofield Study System. The box said Schofield Study Bible 3. Again, again, appears to be old Schofield repackaged. The three, I'm not sure what it means. It could be 
It could be 2000. If you don't tell me later, but it could be 2003. But what I think it is, it's the third edition since the original. And now going back to 1998 copyright, a friend of ours by the name of Bethany Wake, maybe related, she has this one. She uses this. It's the new Schofield Study Bible on the title page, new Schofield Study System on the spine. And it is King James text with a suggested word in the margin. So it might be an attempt by Oxford Press to develop a defined King James. So anyway, this is what I found in my research, and it was a little confusing. In fact, one thing I'll add here, I actually called University, excuse me, Oxford University Press. It was very comical talking to the guy because he was supposed to be the expert on Schofield. And I found myself putting words in his mouth to tell me. And if you're a little confused, I was confused putting this together, to tell you the truth. But I'll kind of give you some conclusions later. But moving on, very briefly, so you know where I'm coming from, and you might say my spiritual journey, my Bible journey. I was born Christian parents. I was blessed to be born Christian parents. Saved at age nine. Grew up in Arkansas, a few hundred miles from here, using the King James Bible. I used a Bible my parents gave me through college, my early years in the Air Force. Sometimes in the late 70s, under the influence of my wife's godly father and others, I purchased an old school field and a sort of reward conference. I used that Bible until 2008 when I purchased a defined King James Bible, and I've been using that ever since, and I recommend it to everyone. However, for Christmas of 2012, I got my wife an iPad. I got myself one a few months later, and I'm being honest here. With the Bible apps, it's so convenient, and you care so much on an iPad or a smartphone. I've been drawn to using this version of the King James, even though I'd rather use the defined King James Bible. So, subject for this discussion would be a development of a defined King James Bible app for the Apple and Android platforms. Okay. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Also, okay, going on now with Scorpio. He didn't invent the concept of study Bible, but he did much to popularize it. He did a great job. And the editions of the Schofield Reference Bible have sold in the millions and have had a tremendous influence on fundamentalists and Bible-believing churches, including many Baptists. A lot of work went into the cross-references, chain references, definitions. What's my place here? And explanations contained in the Schofield Bible. So understand, this talk is not to belittle the work that so many people have used and have been blessed by for over a century. The purpose is to point out problem areas that should be considered when using these Bibles. So we'll go right to the, the old Schofield first. It, it, you know, it's King James, so no problem with the text. But the problem comes with the footnotes and the references and, and comments. You'll, you'll find some of these we've already been addressed this week. It's kind of interesting how a lot of the things we've been discussing this week are coming together. Uh, just want to look at... Uh, one footnote in the Old Testament, one in the New. Uh, Genesis 1.1. Schofield says in his notes, footnotes, the first creative act refers to the dateless past and gives scope for all the geology, geological ages. Okay, this promotes an old earth and a gap theory opposite of creationism. The gap theory agrees with creationists in the 24-hour days for creation. But it puts a gap between two distinct creations in the first and second verses of Genesis 1. And it tries to explain scientific observations, particularly the age of the Earth. Some use this to insert evolution, even theistic evolution. Had there been a creation that was destroyed before the second one, that means the Garden of Eden was built on top of dead bones, totally contradicting Genesis. Genesis 3.19 says, In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. And for out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Now Paul further confirmed this in Romans 5.12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin, and so death passed into, upon all men, for that all have sinned. Uh, and, and, and two men have 
mentioned Mark 16, 9 through 20. The footnote from Dr. Schofield says, the passage from verse 9 to the end is not found in the two most ancient manuscripts, the Sinaitic and the Vatican, and others have it with partial omissions and variations, but it's quoted by Irenaeus and Hippolytus in the 2nd and 3rd century. This casts doubt on the Bible and it follows a critical text. You saw a copy, a photograph of Vaticanus, Codex Vaticanus, where you saw that portion of Mark missing. Now, some of you, like me, have probably seen the same thing with Codex Vaticanus. It's right there. The photograph I've seen, it's missing, and to me, my eyes, it appears it's been erased. Looking at the margin notation, many of these call into question the reading of the King James Bible and suggest substitutions of readings from the critical text of the New Testament. Can you read that out there? Okay, I'll read some of them and summarize here. Starting with Matthew 16, 20, the word Jesus is omitted. It follows the critical text. Matthew 17, 21, Matthew 23, 14, and okay, those two say the best manuscripts omit these. Here again, these three verses is casting doubt on the scripture, the Bible, and it's following critical text. Mark 9, 29, and fasting is removed, same thing. Mark 11, 26, omitted from the best manuscripts. Now, John 6, 29 is a little different. Let me read it. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Dr. Schofield in his margin says, or we have believed and come to understand that thou art the Holy One of God. Well, this is Peter's confession. And in Schofield's words, it has removed Jesus as Messiah and the truth of Jesus as the Son of the living God from Peter's confession. And no justification, no best manuscripts or anything, just there. Same thing with Mark, 1 John 5, 7. Here we get the Trinity. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Schofield's notes, it is generally agreed that verse 7 has no real authority and has been inserted. Hello. I mean, that's news to me. How about you? So, again, casting a lot of doubt, not only on the Trinity, but the whole Bible. And, again, no reference, no backup, no best manuscript. It's just there. Now, although some acknowledge their flaws in the theological footnotes and the margin technical notes, many are not aware of just how many problematic textual notes there are and how damaging they can be. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. In just a few verses, there are a lot of verses. And you've seen others this week in the other versions. Well, it appears a lot of Schofield's comments follow those other versions, even though the text hasn't been changed in his margin. He's giving similar comments there that have actually caused changes in other versions. So, in using those, Schofield, you have a King James Bible text. Be careful with footnotes and the margins. Now, let's take a look at the new Schofield. I'll make a profound statement. The new Schofield Bible is not a King James Bible, and it's not a Schofield Bible. Briefly, the reason it's not a Schofield Bible is that he, Dr. Schofield, didn't edit it, although the title page has him as editor. The new Schofield was published in 1967. Dr. Schofield died in 1921. Okay, reading from the fourth paragraph of the introduction to the new Schofield. Among the changes and improvements in this edition are important word changes in the text to help the reader. Let me read that again. Important word changes in the text to help the reader. A modified system of self-pronunciation, revision of many of the introductions to the books of the Bible, 
including designation of the author, theme, and date, more subheadings, classification of some footnotes, excuse me, clarification of some footnotes, deletions of others, and the addition of many new notes, more marginal references, an entirely new chronology, a new index, a concordance especially prepared for this edition, new maps, and more legible type. Law changes. Again, Dr. Schofield died in 1921. This was done in 1967. Proof that the new Schofield is not the King James Bible is found on almost every page, where the margin identifies, but not all, the King James or KJV word replaced. Looking at the last two sentences of the fifth paragraph of the introduction of the new Schofield, decisions regarding alterations, deletions, and additions were arrived at by majority committee consensus. That was nine men. Each position taken represents the thinking or conviction of the committee as a group. For me, and I assume for most of you, when you're reading, you come upon a word, be it in the Bible, a book, newspaper, whatever, you'd probably rather look it up and have nine men tell you what it means. Today, when someone says, I can't understand the King James Bible, a good response is, get a good dictionary, like, let's see, who was it? Pastor Rainey said, and that was the Noah Webster of 1928, right? Excuse me, 1828. A hundred years off there. Okay. But in the new Schofield, nine men have agreed and made many changes to the text of the King James Bible. Am I back at the right one there? Yeah, okay. To show the magnitude of the changes in the new Schofield, here's a look at the Book of Romans. This is just page one of eight pages giving examples. And I want to thank my wife for doing the laborious, time-consuming job of comparing word for word, punctuation for punctuation of the whole Book of Romans. We would hope to do more and maybe in the future do the four Gospels, maybe the whole New Testament, even going to the Old Testament. It is very time-consuming. Well, here's Romans 1. She did the whole Romans, but here's just from Romans 1. As you can see, there was a lot of punctuation changes. You see those at the top of the chart. You come down a little ways, you'll see word changes. Some are commented on in the margin, some are not. Like the word of four is changed to be four in verse 3 and 31. It was changed from a four to be four. But look at which changed to who it wasn't noted in the margin. Verse 17, the righteousness of God was not changed, but it was defined as a righteousness of which God is a source. And our whole there was not changed, but it was defined. And I don't know, this is just me looking at both of those. I'm not sure I understand why he had to define them. It seems it's pretty odd. Maybe the word definitions in 1909 were a little different. I don't know. And as you go on down the page, you'll see should change to shown. That is missing, but nothing said in the margin. Uncorruptible to change to incorruptible. The word to was removed twice in verse 23. Other words, change to fitting. Convenient change to seemingly. Debate change to strife. Despiteful change to insolent. And without going into more detail, I will add that dashes were used to replace a semicolon in Romans 7.13 and to replace two semicolons in Romans 8.17. I'm not an English expert, let alone punctuation, but why would anyone replace semicolons with dashes? I don't understand that. The next chart gives a summary of the changes in Romans. Okay, you'll see there were 369 punctuation changes. 100 identified word changes, 76 unidentified word changes, and 55 definitions in the margin. Now, my wife also did a quick look at Matthew and John, and here she found 259 identified word changes, 85 definitions, and in John, 84 identified word changes, 46 definitions. So you can see from these charts the magnitude of the changes to the King James Bible. So the New Schofield is definitely not a King James Bible. 
So I hope this look at the old Schofield and the new Schofield has been of use to you. Bottom line, with all the world problems, the problems in our churches, which Bible to use is one less problem we should have. Get the Bible text right, the King James Bible, and God will bless what follows. Additionally, we know that we know the old school old Schofield text was King James. It appears that all editions following the new Schofield are also King James text. Thank you.